G'day folks, Tony again here for more of the jaunty saunterings of Gauntport the Taunter. The rusty jungle is where we find ourselves. We are wandering our way uh, kind of along this river and through the jungle here just to the east of Kyokukya because we are attempting uh, to complete the Raising Indrix quest given to us by Warden Indrix uh, to go and kill his brother in the Goat Folk Village. Uh, let's see how we go with that. Uh, I am going to make a campfire, however, first of all, uh, so that we can cook ourselves some food because we are hungry. And I don't want to be hungry uh, any more than I have to. So we have had a couple of, uh, of decent bashes here against uh, a variety of enemies, uh, both in terms of... What's happening here? Horned Chameleon. Where would that be? Oh, I see. Uh, we have had a few battles here uh, where we've been taking on uh, a variety of uh, goat folk and a few other bits and pieces as well. But uh, we have yet to find... Where are you? There we go. We have yet to find uh, the particular individual that we've been looking for. There's a few more goat folks uh, here across the river. Let's uh, wait for them to come in towards us. Uh, it looks like a boar coming in to, to have a piece of us here as well. That's okay. We've got a little bit of blocking going on here. Might just uh, take that boar down quickly. Try and reduce the number of things that are attacking us. We've got a bunch of them uh, Looks like another goat folk came in from the south. And uh, as I was saying last time, we do seem to be able to take a, a fair number of hits here from these uh, default kind of uh, normal goat enemies without taking a ton of damage. Oh boy. Here we go. Here we go. We're now level 19. One hit point, 90 skill points, one mutation point. Tremendous. Let's heal ourselves up first. And uh, then let's go and have a look. Let's see what we can do with this. We're two mutation points towards our uh, towards our next random mutation. That will require another two levels, which will bring us to level 21, at which point we should get, I believe, uh, another uh, attribute point that we can put into our toughness there to reduce uh, or remove, rather, that negative one penalty. Uh, something to look forward to. We're also now at 270 skill points. And uh, what I was planning on aiming towards here was the uh, was the dual wielding ability, which costs 300. So we're still another another ding, another level uh, off of getting there. But hooray, level 19, we did it. Uh, let's see if we can keep ditting it. Oh boy, these espers just aren't going to leave us alone, are they? Um, so if you are uh, new to the show. You'll see our Psychic Glimmer there under the list of mutations on the right is at 32. This means that there are other random brain wizards in the universe who are trying to hunt us down uh, and kill us. So we're going to move our way cautiously along. There's one of them down there. You can see in purple who's this Imarok no longer toes frontal osprey. Uh, hi, how are you doing? Let's uh, run with our usual thing here. We're going to drop a freeze on them so they can't move, hopefully. Oh, it's too far away. How much closer do we need to get? Mm, a little bit. Let's give it a go. Oh, no. We just got stunned and we got stunned again. And again. And now we have been confused. Classic. Uh, very similar to what happened last time. So we're going to move our way back, back, back to the northwest because I know that I've just come along the river there and hopefully that's going to give us enough time to become unconfused and indeed it has. Let's try that chill again. Are you in range? You were kind of before. Yes. Done. Very, very done. Uh, and actually we might move in a little closer uh, before we try using our masterwork carbine. Oof. Something just blew up what what was that i wonder need to get ourselves a reload and more shooting hey how about that 
At the moment of victory, your swelling ego curves the psychic ether and causes the psyche of Imarok no longer Toe's frontal osprey to collide with your own. As the weaker of the two, its binding energy is exceeded and it explodes. Would you like to encode its psionic bits on the holographic boundary of your own psyche, plus one ego permanently? Oh, yes, please. What you understood to be the psychic sea was only a pond. There are other watchers now, countless in number, beyond the gulf of materiality. Points of light glimmer in all directions, but what are directions on a space that cannot be ordered? All you know now is of an ether vaster than the very mathematics that describe it. And you are not, nor will you ever be again alone. I think uh, we just made everything uh, even tougher on ourselves. Let's have a check and see. So with that plus one ego, it's taken us to an ego of 24, which gives us a plus four bonus. So you can see all of those mutations that were level four are now level five, which brings our psychic glimmer up to 40. And I'm sure that means that we're going to have even tougher, weirder, nastier things coming after us in the future. But so be it. Uh, such is the nature of, uh, of being awesome. Okay. So we've frozen the river. Let's see if we'll slip on the river. Whee! We sure will. Uh, we're all healed up. And I guess we just keep making our way along here looking for this goat folk village. I, uh, I don't know. Ooh, a flayed goat folk corpse. Interesting. I certainly didn't do that. I don't know exactly when we may or may not end up finding, uh, whoever it is that we're looking for. Ooh, this looks gruesome. What is going on here? A bloody thatched wall, a bloody charred goat folk corpse. Fire burned the flesh and charred the bone of this mangoat. All that remains is a blackened skeletal frame covered in molten glutinous tissue and crumpled on the ground. Could this be something to do with the amaranthine prism that we're looking for? I wonder. Let's uh, let's have a look and see what's in here. Shotgun shells. Thank you very much. Raw bear meat. Delicious. A carbide short sword. I can sell that. Acid gas grenade, love it. A sheaf of blood-stained goat skin. Interesting. Let's read this. Oh boy. I think, well I see the word amaranthine there, so, so I think we might be onto something. A sheaf of blood-stained goat skin parchment. Now I confer upon myself sovereignty over the artifice of language, that the other may possess sight of the path along which I lead my thralls. Toward Amaranth, O oh, deathless city, whence my cloven-hoofed children dream themselves into being. Here, Mammon, their beneficent father, he who is wrought of his own dream stuff. Amaranthine Mammon, Amaranthine father, Amaranthine dream, inscrutable ramblings, blah, 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 yet feast upon the goat hearts. Uh, sure. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Uh... A sheet of flayed stretch goats in scuts is stuck together and written upon with kid blood. Uh, a kid, of course, being a baby goat, which makes it somehow far less disturbing. Uh, let's pick that up, shall we? I think we may slowly be approaching what we're looking for, and I think we may be starting to get a little hint of the, of the reason why uh, Warden Indrix doesn't want us to wield the Amaranthine Prism. Uh... Oh, hello, Leech. Are you after me, are you? Very well. Uh, thank you for playing. Oh, another Leech. These pesky Leeches stopping us from our auto move. What else do we have here? More Leeches. Always more Leeches. Ice frogs. And various other things. Oh, look. It's a convention. The whole gang's here. Uh, what are we going to do here first? I guess we'll boost our toughness and we'll try and take these things down uh, and see how well we go doing this uh, the old-fashioned way. Maybe the Ice Frog, I think, maybe next, in case it tries to do any sort of magic and magic We're taking some fair hits here. We're taking a lot of hits here. So it is Force Bubble time. Uh, it is also Sunder Mind time. And then I guess we'll, uh, we'll pull out the Masterwork Carbine. Did we kill it? I think we did. We did indeed. Uh, and I think we could also mark that target. Did that work? Don't know if that marking is actually working or not. It's hard to tell. 
not marked, it says. Okay, well, I guess it's not going to let us. We'll just shoot the old-fashioned way. I need to reload. No. Good. We did it once again. Goat folk savage, where are you? Oh, you're close. Fair enough. Ow, that's bad. Oh, that's very bad. There's a sower over there, and we are on two hit points. Uh, and we have very little that we can do here. So we are going to run like mad uh, in the other direction. In fact, I think we might actually check and see if we have ourselves a salve injector here uh, to get ourselves some hit points back. Because one hit at this point and we're, well, we're dead. So let's, uh, let's apply that. You feel a soothing tingle in your chest as your wounds start to close. Very, very good. Uh, that should help us out. Look at those hit points. And we're back up to full. The soothing tingle fades You're just in time. Now, where did everything go, I wonder? How are we doing on our cooldowns? 20 rounds for the force bubble. That doesn't really protect us against, uh, against sower seeds. 91 round cooldown on getting uh, more hit points back. That's uh, it's a fair ways away, isn't it? So what happened and where did they go? Hmm, it appears that Soa just threw a grenade at that salamander. Uh, which is fine by me. Are you within range, good sir? I believe you are. There we go. We'll try marking that target and we'll do a wounding fire. Uh, I think that worked. It did. Haha, <laughs> we did it. Congratulations, everyone. We're going to try it again here. Another wounding fire on this one. Oh, look at all that bleeding happening there. I'm assuming that's probably enough to kill them before they get to us. Yep. Top work team. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is something to take, but I need to do a get. Three frozen sower seeds. Beautiful. I think that's actually going to put us over inventory. It is. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, and I just remembered that I was going to look up what that sphere of negative weight did, and I haven't done it yet. Um, I really need to to make myself a task list so that I remember to do this sort of thing. Oh no, it looks like it's intrinsic because it's here is negative ten, so maybe it's already working. Interesting. Oh boy, look at all this stuff that we have: our sugary, lush, honeyed salt that we use to cure ourselves of glot rot. We have a lot of empty water skins. What else can we get rid of here? I wonder. Clearly not the recoilers. Uh, oh, there's a couple of things here that we haven't uh, disassembled, so we'll do that, and that will probably help us. Uh, maybe enough. Yes, it does. Good stuff. All right. That water unfroze. How lovely. What else do we have here is a quillipede, certainly. Come on down. Any minute now. Really would like to get that dual wielding happening. Goat folk savage. Goodness me, they're really just coming out of the woodwork here now, aren't they? Where did you go? There we are. Another mark, another wounding fire. Another couple of hits and we're done. How much ammo do we have left? I wonder. 171 lead slugs. And I believe that this takes 24 at a time. We are going to hoe through that pretty quickly. I think I might need to be a little more judicious uh, as to exactly when I use that thing. Certainly when we get to, uh, to a boss. Uh, presumably Ammon. Oops. Uh, if and when we find them. Ooh, a treasure chest. Where did that savage... Ah, uh, there they are. Come on now. Greetings. So we'll have a look in that treasure chest. Maybe it'll be another message for us, or maybe it will contain another sphere of negative weight. That would be nice. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> Killed that... Uh, Killed that boar way faster than I thought. A weird artifact, absolutely. We already picked up a carbide short sword. I don't need to carry around uh, yet another three pound thing. What have we got here? Resonance grenade. Mark one. Cool. Keep on trucking. So there's goat folk just sort of around here. 
They don't seem to be in uh, in packs at the moment, though. We're kind of seeing uh, them piecemeal, which I'm not necessarily complaining about, but uh, I don't know if that really... I don't know if that really indicates that we're uh, that we're close to what we're looking for. We must be a fair ways into the jungle now. We are. Very well. There's a lot of blood in the river. And it looks like, coming off of the, uh, the right-hand side of screen, it looks like something is on fire because we're having little pieces of smoke uh, come drifting across the screen. Interesting. What could it be? Let's heal ourselves up. And I'm not going to auto walk now. I'm going to approach this slowly. Ah, ow. Okay, well that was uh, that was awfully daft of me. Approaching slowly, of course, then resulting in, uh, in me getting hit by two sower seeds. Congratulations. Smart move, Tony. All right. Well, that's one down. Um, I guess we need to be cautious. That is not a sower. There is certainly something burning nearby. You know what I think we might do? Because I don't use it as often as I probably should. I'm going to use a life drain there. Try and get some of those hit points back, which is going to make it less likely that when our uh, boost toughness runs out, we uh, we end up on, on one hit point, because that's never fun. What have we got here? A wild-eyed water vine merchant. As you approach this still figure, you catch sight of his coat, sewn from frayed, varicolored patches. This man is filthy and wild-eyed. His mouth twists into a delirious grin when he notices you. Judging by that aspect of glee and eagerness, he seems to believe that he alone is privy to some cardinal knowledge which will surely enlighten you once he deigns to share it. He's equipped with a patchwork uh, coat, walking stick, and sturdy leather moccasins. And is apparently neutral. Okay, then. I guess we'll uh, have a chat with them. You! Are you come to attend his waking dream? Nor do I have cloven hooves, but yes, a cloven mind. Uh, hey, who are you? Who am I? Who are you? What does it matter? You and I are nothing. The most insignificant afterthoughts of an amaranthine shade. What are you talking about? The amaranthine dream, the heights within ourselves we might yet reach with his guidance. There it is in all of us, shades of our elder selves. Within each man, a goat. Within each goat, a man. Uh, hey, I must talk with the shaman Mammon Soul Drinker. You don't talk with that man goat, you listen to him. Interesting. Can we trade? Holy moly, look at all of these th things. <clears throat> that you have on you. Lots of severed limbs. Interesting. Uh, a credit wedge. Cool. And uh, canteens of blood. That's a... That's a lot of blood. <laughs> okay. Um, let's continue. <laughs> So, uh, drips of blood in the river here, Owl, and another sower. You know, I'm definitely going to mark Owl again. And now I'm definitely going to Wounding Fire. And that's that. These sowers really are a bit of a pain. How are we doing on our cooldowns? Oof, that's an awfully long time before we can use our boost toughness again. Mm, I don't like it. I really don't. And there's our toughness returning to normal. So let's give ourselves a rest. Back to 48, which is uh Okay, we're on we're back on our on our cooldown now. Where is this smoke coming from? The next screen, possibly. What awaits us? Appears to be where the river turns. I wonder if we should follow it to the north or if we should keep going 
uh, eastwards. Come on now. Good. So it looks like more destroyed things. Yes, another flayed goat folk corpse. The skin was flayed from the body of this goat folk, leaving behind a crumpled frame of tendons and muscles rotting in putrid black blood. Blech. Is this a building? I think it might be a building. This could perhaps be the village. It looks like a Naphtali is here. I'm assuming they're not uh, fond of us. Nope. So we'll get rid of them for sure. What is in here, I wonder? Uh, more charred remains. Even more charred remains. All right. Something bad happened here, I think. This, uh, I assume, could be the village. Looks like a building full of blood. Delightful. What was that shooting at us? Can't see anything at the moment. Aha, a Naphtali with a blowgun. Not for long. Uh, sure. More blood, more tables. What else have we got? What a creepy thing to come across in the jungle. Is there a way into this building? I'm looking for another... Uh, treasure chest, if you don't mind. Okay. So, certainly looks like this... Oh, there's a chest. Certainly looks like this village is uh, buried deep in the jungle. Oh, and it's telling us now that we finish the step, find Mammon Soul Drinker of the quest of raising Indrix and receive a thousand experience points. Yay, us. And there they are. I'm assuming they're going to be hostile. Yep. Mammon Soul Drinker. Mammon stands nearly a head taller than his kin and broader at the shoulders. Great tufts of blood matted hair, some of which is braided, tassel out from his head and chin, and a tattered crimson headdress hangs from one of his colossal horns. In long swaths on his bare chest, the fur is scorched and the skin flayed. He wears a sarong wrapped about his waist, its wool fibres sodden with a foul, inky liquid. His face is a vision of madness, at once the countenance of a rapturous crone and a child in fright. He's loved by the children of Mammon. It's in the title. Hated by the Putus Templar for disapproving a famous theorem. Disliked by the Cabal of the Swordborn for insulting their churches. And he's equipped with a plaster for jerkin, massive horns, bloody carbide dagger, and the amaranthine prism. The game tells us that he is tough and hostile. Good to know. We're going to go into this battle hungry, folks. Uh, boost toughness is the first thing we're going to do. Uh, lucky us. And I guess uh, we'll try a Sunder Mind on Mammon and see if that works. It did a little bit. So that's good to know. He seems to be coming at us uh, closer and closer. So I'm going to drop a chill right on top of him. Because uh, that seems to be working fairly well. Although it does appear that he's still running towards us. No, he is frozen. All right. So this is our chance to mark him as a target. Uh, to drop a wounding fire on him. Uh, so he is doing a little bit of bleeding. And then I guess while we can, we're just going to shoot. Uh, with our rifle. He's down to injured now, so that's good to know. Still injured, uh, hopefully still frozen. We're going to do a reload, and we're going to shoot some more, because uh, that's why we have this, uh, this carbide rifle. Stops bleeding, but is still frozen. Badly wounded. And dead! Yay! Your reputation with the children of Mammon changed by negative 210. Classic. Uh, Putus Templar like us more, the Cabal of the Swordborn like us more. And uh, there's a thing dropped on the ground there. What could it be? What could it be, I wonder? We ought to got an Urberry, so that's good to know. Looks like there's a floating glow sphere there and an Amaranthine prism. How interesting. A plaster for jerkin, three and negative three. How does that compare with what we're wearing? Uh, which is two and three. That, that ain't really a thing. Uh, but maybe... We can pick it up and sell it for something. It's 20 pounds. Oh, dear. That's no good. Uh, well, we're definitely picking that up. And we're not going to equip it. Uh, recall story. I wonder what that does. The black glass. Um, Uri the jeweler mumbled with a stone in his hand. 
Lapis from the shore of songs, said the boy. And, hmm, Jasper, Red Rock. Uri furrowed his brow. Don't heed the tale of every thirsty fool, boy. The boy seemed to ignore him. He pointed to a small dusty shard the jeweller kept in a file on the high shelf of a pine cabinet. Did it madden Priam, truly? Uri glanced over his shoulder at the black glass and sighed. Indeed, boy, though I've heard it told all kings are mad. Who else would think themselves fit to rule as eaters? From which shore was it culled? asked the boy. None of this world. Do you know the tale of Toe? No, the boy lied. When the eaters lived and scurred the stars, they visited the worlds of a thousand thousand different beings, and those beings likewise visited our own world. Several of those beings had assembled a coven that spanned the firmament, and they welcomed the eaters into its fold. For ages, the civilizations of the coven knew kindness and prosperity, and to all reaches of the clustered cosmos did the domain of the coven stretch. One of the beings of the coven hailed from a faraway and darkling star. With its mind, it could fold the fabric of space and time as you or I might fold a supper cloth. To the coven, it was known as To. For reasons we can but fathom, the civilizations of the stars indicted To. It was the will of the coven that it be held on our very world in the bondage of the eaters. They contrived for To a prison from which it could not fold itself away, and there To languished for eons. In time the eaters left or perished, and the coven was forgotten to our world. Yet here To remains imprisoned. And what of the black prism? asked the boy. A handful of black sand drawn from the shores of a dreary rock that spun about To's star. The sands were fired in the burning gases of that star and cooled suddenly when To appeared in Quod a moment thence. It is said that To bestowed the glass to an ancient custodian of its prison so that the man might free it. Once the man had chosen to wield the glass, it began to mantle with an amaranthine hue. You see, those that peer through its faces are given to fits of madness, for they see the world by the light of To's star, and they see themselves as To does. What will become of it? Does it frighten you? Immensely. I mean to see it destroyed, but it bears the properties of no earthly glass, and my guild would never forgive me if I forsook the chance to study it first. It was the jewellers who bartered the thing from Priam's grieving sister. Now, enough of this splendour. You are to study still. Uri lifted another stone. Hmm? But the boy's eyes stayed fixed on the prism. Ugh. That doesn't bode well. We're going to pick it up. Uh, that floating glow sphere will probably sell for something, so we'll grab it as well. I'm not really sure. Does this have any special properties? It does. It gives us a bunch of resistances. That might be handy to have. That means we're going to have to do a bunch of inventory juggling. What do we have here that we don't need? Uh, I guess we could drop our arm. We could eat it as well, but I'm not going to. That's going to get us five pounds of the way there. But there's still an awful lot left to go. What is all this? Raw bear meat. Uh, no. That could go. I'm going to drop all of that. And in fact, seeing as I've dropped all of that, I'm going to pick my arm back up. Because uh, I have a sentimental attachment to it. All right. We have retrieved the amaranthine prism. We're also going to have a look and see what is in here. Woo, look at all these books. Across Mogragi, Volume 2 and 3. Heirlooms of Quud. We're going to grab all of that. No, thank you. I'd like to pick them up. We've already done enough reading. Uh, I just read three pages of lore. Heirlooms of Quid. Good, good, good. The Pickling of the Miniature. I don't even know what that is. Glacier. I wonder what that's about. Mmm, looks like a cooking recipe. Nice. We've learned to cook a bunch of things. We'll pick that up because we can probably sell it. Sure, crayons. We'll disassemble the folding chair, giving us even more things. Can we still move? Indeed we can. Uh, and we should probably just check the remaining buildings to make sure there's nothing else in them. Damn. I'm assuming there won't be, but it's always best to check. Oh, hello. How are you? Uh, good to see you. All the best. Uh, we might just cook ourselves some food, seeing as we are hungry. Good. And uh, one more building, folks. What could be in it, I wonder. 
where would the door be, I wonder? It's always in the last place you look uh, because then you stop looking. And speaking of stopping, uh, that is all the time that we have for this part of Let's Play. So thank you so, so much for watching. I do really appreciate your company. I do appreciate your comments and your feedback. Uh, so if uh, you've enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when other episodes are released. And of course, please tell a friend if you think they might enjoy this. And come back again soon for more of the jaunty saunterings of Gaunt Bought the Taunter.